Now friends, let's talk about this problem. This is a problem based on matrices and uh, you have been given a matrix A2, 1, 1, 0, whole raised to the power n and then we have A, B, C, D. Now the, this question is purely uh, by comparing we can find the values of A and B, C and D in terms of n. So that is the important component of this particular problem. Now how to go about it? I will just give you a direction and it is a very simple uh, thing if you know the basics of the binomial expansions and basics of matrices, things can be done, right? The most important thing is the comparison part. So what we can do? We have, you know, this matrix. So this is the matrix which we need to understand. We need to go through it, right? So uh, this matrix is like we have 2, 1, 1, 0. We have to divide it into two different matrix now. This is equal to, we have 1, 0, 0, 1. Then this is plus, we have 1, 1, 1. This is minus 1, you know. This matrix can be written in the sum of two matrices and these are the two matrices we have. And this is basically we are talking about A. This is A we have and this is I, right. We are talking about I plus A raised to the power n, right. This, so we have to use the binomial expansion in this case. So this is going to be, if I take I to be common, right. The first term is we have 1 here, then we have NC2 times 2. Then we have nc4, right, times 2 square. So this is how we can write it. Then we have the next part that is plus. We take a common. So if you take a common, you can see here, this is going to be nc, you know, 1, right. This is going to be nc3, this is 2. Then we have nc5, this is 2 squared. So this is how we can write it down, isn't it? Why this i is coming outside? Let's have a look at that part also. So if I talk about uh, i part, so how this is going to happen? See, a square is what? We need to take this part. A is what? We have 1, 1, 1 minus 1, okay? Again, we have to multiply it 1, 1, 1 minus 1, okay? And this is going to be twice of i. So what I have done, I have just expanded it. And whenever a square comes into picture, we have substituted 2i, 2i, 2i everywhere and we come out with this expression, right? So now what we have to go through it is basically what we have to do. This is nothing but we are talking about the terms, the coefficients, right? So we know what are the coefficients nc0 plus nc2 into 2 plus nc4 to 2 square. There is a formula for the same. And then we have all the terms being added here also, the odd positioning term. Now using this we take this matrix because this is the thing we have, the left hand side, right hand side will give you a matrix of this sort, right, because A and I is there. We equate the terms, once we equate the terms, we get the values of A, B, C and D. Once we get the values of A, B and C and D, we come out with this limits to be the correct one, right, A, C, D to be the correct one. Now students, let us talk about this problem. A very interesting problem based on complex number. You have been given a complex number z such that modulus of z is equal to 1. Then we have p as 1 minus z modulus plus 1 plus z square. Then we have to find the maximum value of p. Then we have to find the maximum value of p as 3 plus root 2, 4. Then we have minimum value of p to be root 2. We have minimum value of p is root 2 minus 1. So the easiest method what we can do here is we can convert it in terms of theta. That means we can take that z is equal to e to the power i theta form. So if we talk about this problem here, what we have, we can take z to be say e to the power i theta or we can write it as cos theta plus iota sin theta, right? This is what you can do, isn't it? Now uh, we substitute here in p. And if we talk about P here, so P is like we take 1 minus cos theta, then we have minus of iota sin theta, then we have plus. So again, we have plus here, z squared. So obviously, we can use the Demauer's theorem here, which is going to be what? 
1 plus cos 2 theta plus iota sin 2 theta, right? This is what we have. So, 1 minus cos theta is 2 sin square theta by 2, sin theta is 2 sin theta by 2 cos theta by 2. So, what we can do? We can take uh, 2 sin theta by 2 common and we are left out with say we can have a form of anything cos theta by 2 plus iota sin theta by 2 or cos theta by 2 minus iota sin theta by 2. We can separate it once you take out sin theta by 2. So, that is nothing but the modulus of z is going to be 1, whatever z we are getting here. I mean cos theta by 2 plus iota sin theta by 2, if you take the modulus of that, so we will always get 1, right. So, that we have separated. Then we have cos 2 theta. Now, if we talk about cos 2 theta, we have 1 plus cos 2 theta, that is 2 cos square theta and this is i sin 2 theta. So, 2 cos square theta plus 2 sin theta cos theta. So, this is going to be cos square theta. We have iota, this is 2, right. So, this is going to be 2 cos theta, this is sin theta, right. This is what we have. Now, you see here, 2 sin theta by 2, we can take again 2 cos theta common as I told you that this is always going to be a part which is like we can write it, we take cos theta plus iota sin theta within the modulus. So, this is always going to be 1. So, we have twice of cos theta. So, we can take it more and this can be written as 1 minus 2 sin square theta by 2 within the mod, right. So, what we can do? We can take this as 2 sin theta by 2 plus twice of, we can write it as 2 sin square within the bracket we just write it in this way, fine. This is what we can write. Mod of sin theta by 2, we have to take it as say t suppose. So, if we take it as t, so this is going to be twice of t, right. Then we have twice of mod of 2 t square minus 1, right. So, friends, you can see here, now the things becomes easy for us because we can use the concept of modulus in this case and we get a curve which is parabolic in nature, if we say p is a function of t. So, according to that, if we just draw the graph, you can see the points there and we will see the maximum value of p is going to be 4 and the minimum value is going to be root 2. How will you find it? Use the concept of once you separate it, how you separate it? You take 2t plus twice of mod of 2t square minus 1. So, mod of 2t square minus 1 can be written as 2t square minus 1. If 2t square minus 1 is greater than or equal to 0, minus of 2t square minus 1, if we have 2t square minus 1 less than 0. So, we have two cases of p. Accordingly, we can plot it and we can draw the diagram and get the values as b and c. b and c will be the correct answer we have using the concept of quadratic form. If we draw the parabola in this case, right. Again, it is a very interesting sum. Let us have a look at the thing. The curve has the property that the ratio of the perpendicular distances of the origin O and the point A 3 comma 4 from a normal at any point on the curve is constant and is equal to 2. Then the curve is what? There are four options. So, we have more than one correct need to be very careful, right, because we cannot eliminate, the elimination process does not work here, need to be very, very careful in this, right. So, you see friends, what happens? Let us understand the problem first of all. So, here it has been given that curve has the property. So, ratio of the perpendicular distances of the origin O. So, origin O and the point from the normal, that means we need a normal in this case. So, if we find the equation of the normal friends, what we have y minus y, right. So, let me take at the point x comma y, we have this and if we talk about the normal, so normal is dy upon dx and this is going to be x minus of x, right. This is what we can write it, is not it? This has been given to us. So, y minus y minus 1, then we have dy by dx and this is x minus x. 
okay. From here we can get the form in this way x plus of y this is dy upon dx right this is what we have can you see that and minus y dy upon dx and this is minus x is equal to 0. The points being given to as origin and then we have the point as 3 comma 4 right this is what we have is not it. Now, if I take from the origin means we are talking about d1. So, d1 is like what? We have minus of y this is dy divided by dx minus of x right because this and this become 0 ax1 plus by1 x1 y1 is 0. So, we can just write this to be 0 the whole term divided by under root of 1 plus we have dy upon sorry dy upon dx whole square ok. This is what we have and then we take d2. So, if we talk about d2 here d2 is going to be how much? This is going to be 3 plus we have 4 dy upon dx minus of y this is dy upon dx minus x whole divided by under root of what we have the same thing we have this as 1 plus what we have dy upon dx whole square fence right this is what we have can you see that. Now the ratio of this from d1 and d2 so d1 is equal to twice of d2 because d1 by d2 is always going to be 2. So, that means we are talking about this as this right. So, d1 is equal to twice of d2. So, we can substitute this part. So, all the things can be substituted once you substitute these values. So, d1 is twice of d2 we get in terms of dy by dx dy by dx. So, once you remove the things we get 1 is equal to plus minus of the other the concept right. So, when you use this part we get the equation of a circle, we get the equation of circle right. This is what we get once you integrate the things and we get a form which is the equation of the circle. Now, the interesting thing is like once you get the equation of the circle here friends right. So, what we are going to do here let us see the things options here if we get equation of a circle eccentricity is never going to be half for that right because that is the equation of a circle. A curve whose all normals are concurrent right that means option b is correct and also as I told you that it is always give you a equation of a circle. So, this is the locus definition we have for the circle a curve says that all the points lying on it are equidistance from a fixed point. So, this is the right answer and uh, obviously we cannot have this is not it. So, what are the options we have we have D and D to be the correct one.